Well, we have now reached our second to most recent film in Pixar's library, Elemental, the little movie that could. What originally opened to disastrous numbers slowly picked itself up and became Pixar's most profitable film since COVID. Now, this was not one of my more anticipated movies from last year. It wasn't really on mine or anyone else's radar to immediately check out. So it makes it a genuine surprise to say that Elemental was actually pretty good. I liked it. No, it's not top tier Pixar. I'm pretty sure no one expected it to be. But it's sweet, it's got beautiful visuals, and two leads that I slowly grew to care for. My family and I seriously did not expect for this movie to be as good as it turned out. There was literally a guy behind us that was cheering and clapping during the end credits. It's not a perfect movie, not by a long shot, but it is good as heck. How, you might ask? Let's talk about that. For the uninitiated, Elemental is a movie centered around a world of sentient elements that consist of air, fire, water, and earth. The story is focused on an immigrant fire family trying to make a new life for themselves. Along the way, the daughter character Ember starts a relationship with a water person named Wade. Let's talk about the romance first, because there are many moments where the love the characters feel for each other shine through. Everything about the relationship is low drama and happens very naturally. They meet by chance, they solve a minor problem together, they start going out together, there's some family drama thrown in there, very simple stuff. Though I will say the way the relationship starts is a little rough. The beginning of the movie does a good job of settling us into Ember's family and their neighborhood and sets up her conflict of not being able to control her flame very well. The fact that everything was so interesting made me a little surprised when Wade was suddenly introduced, and it didn't help that the first few minutes of his screen time was him always crying and sweating. Thankfully, he's not like that throughout the entire film, and he proves to be a very kind and sincere guy. And the way the two slowly care for each other and bond is very endearing and has that wholesome factor that Pixar never fails at. Speaking of things Pixar never fails at delivering, the animation? was very good. I was very impressed with how everything looked. The sets, the colors, the designs, everything feels completely lived in. In fact, my uncle Nico told me how he was pleasantly surprised by how good the movie turned out to be, and that even if it did turn out bad, the animation still looked outstanding, which it absolutely is. Like I said in my Coco review, Pixar always finds a way to look for new animation styles for their movies, and it's no different here. There's a lot of unique creativity on display in terms of how the characters move and how they interact with the things around them. It really is a nice film to look at and you can tell the animators did a great job with a lot of the scenery. Then there's the immigrant plotline which is the most noteworthy and talked about part of the movie easily. Inspired by director Peter Stone's own experience of what it was like to be an immigrant in New York City is something I thought was nicely adapted into his film and using the different elements as a sort of metaphor for the story is a unique idea. I do wish this aspect of the movie was focused on more since it's kind of shafted on for a good portion since most of it is focused on Ember and Wade's relationship. However, what we do get to see of this aspect is handled well and surprisingly maturely. There's a flashback scene where Ember talks about how she and her dad were not allowed in a museum just because they're fire people. You know, a subtle racism allegory. This is a great scene that I feel was cut short too quickly and I wish we could have gotten to see more of it. But everything to do with the immigrant side of the story is very clever, as even though I am not an immigrant myself, I am still able to put myself in another person's shoes and see what life was like from a different perspective. My biggest gripe with the movie is that maybe the plot was a little too basic. The romance between Ember and Wade was definitely fun, but still feels like a lot of many other rom-com couples we're already familiar with, in terms of their personalities and their backgrounds. Ember is the work-oriented person that tries to help her family, and Wade is more of the goofball type of person, but still someone that really cares very much for others' well-being. 
That doesn't make them flat and cliche character types. I'm just saying the way the story plays out with their relationship is a little familiar. I also think there were some missed opportunities to explore more of the element world since as is, it makes no sense if you think about it for longer than 5 minutes. Like, you could explore the other elements further, like the wind and earth people. The movie is mainly spent on the fire and water people, and it seems as if fire people are the only ones being mistreated, but where does that leave the other elements? I don't know, it felt a little weird. The last thing I take issue with in regards to the story is that it feels like another centered around generational trauma. The specific conflict of what my parents want me to be versus what I want to be felt repetitive. I normally don't hate when stories I'm already familiar with are told, only as long as they tell them in a way that's fresh and original, but here it was very obvious. So no, this movie isn't perfect and not one of Pixar's all time best, but its premise, its impressive animation, and its character work for the two leads managed to keep it afloat for the most part and make this film overall a solid watch. Not one of my favorite Pixar films, but I still dig it. And now we have come to the final and most recent film in Pixar's library, Inside Out 2. And it looks like things are about to get even weirder and wackier. But to quote Victor Tanzik, But I mustn't say any more or I shall spoil the next- Oh, I dropped my phone. 